Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to tonight's Bible study live stream. Let me just uh, try to share a little bit. I would like to welcome all of you. The reason, the motivation for this live stream is to study the doctrines. The reason I am trying to study the doctrines is because I read in Matthew 19, I think Matthew 13, in the parable of the sower, that those who don't understand the doctrines will be taken away by the enemy. That's why I wanted to review the doctrines for myself. And the easiest way to review is to teach the doctrines to others so that I can, because the one who teaches is the one who learns the most. That is why I am trying to teach these doctrines through live stream for myself. And if other people will benefit, then that will be an additional benefit. So the topic tonight is about facing the judgment with confidence. But as we start, let us start with our prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, be merciful to us, Lord. Forgive us from all our sins. Give us wisdom and understanding as we study your word so that it may change our lives and help us to remember everything that you have teach us, you have taught us in the Bible. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, facing the judgment with confidence. There was a king. His name was James, King James I. He was one of England's kings. <clears throat> he became a judge because he was a king. But he doesn't understand. He had a frustration. And he didn't want to be judged anymore because he said if the one side presents their case and the other side presents their case, whoever side uh, presented just presented their case, he said that it looks correct. But on the other side, the opposite side will present their case, he says it looks correct also. So he got frustrated because he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know which is right. So <laughs> that is one example of a human judge <clears throat> you know when you somebody tells you you're going to court it's scary yeah because somebody might be suing you so it's not a, a comfortable thing to go to court unless you are the one who is innocent right <clears throat> but we all know that the Bible says that we are all headed to court. We are all going to the judgment. Psalms 96, 11 to 13 says, Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field be joyful in all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. Okay. To judge the earth. Jesus Christ, God is coming to judge the earth. And we are included in the earth. Furthermore, he shall judge the world with righteousness. Okay. Here in earth, sometimes we are not trusting the, the system, the legal system. But when God, Jesus comes as judge, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Wow. So David looked forward. He said, rejoice. Rejoice. Because the judgment is coming. Therefore, for Christians, for people who obey God, for people who <clears throat> love God with obedience, who believe in, his, in the Bible and obey whatever God says, Judgment is something to look forward to. But for people who don't obey, people who hate God, it is a scary event. And that is coming. 
The reason uh, <clears throat> David was happy for the judgment to come is because he trusts God. He knows that God is fair and just and God will identify correctly the evil and the righteous. So that is something and God will remove all the evil in this earth. That's why the judgment is something that we can look forward to, to get rid of all sin. <clears throat> the Bible writers know that the judgment is something that is very important and it will be accomplished later in the future. Paul says in Acts 17.31, He has appointed a day on which he will judge the world. Acts 17.31 And this judgment is not something that will only affect some people. It will affect the world. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us will appear. Okay? Whether we believe it or not, whether we like it or not, all of us are going to appear in the judgment of Christ. In the judgment seat of Christ in the last day. And we will be held accountable for our decisions. <clears throat> the Bible says, Romans 14, 12, So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. As you see in that picture here, that there is an angel who writes everything that we have ever thought, done, or was planning to do. Not only does the Bible say that the truth we will be judged through the truth. It also gives us how and when the judgment is going to play, take place. Daniel said in Daniel 7, 9, and 10, I watched till the thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days, I think that is God because capital A, capital D, was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels of a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court, okay, this is the judge sitting. The court was seated and the books were opened. The books. Those are the records of everything that we have ever done in our life. So Daniel sees God the Father, who is the Ancient of Days, seated upon the eternal throne, surrounded by so many countless angels. And you just uh, notice what Daniel saw next. Jan Daniel 7.13 I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, that's Jesus, Coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Oh, so Jesus was coming like the courtroom. God the Father is the judge, and Jesus was coming from the earth. He was... Uh, he was, God was presiding over the court and there were witnesses who was taking secretary uh, like the holy angels recording everything and recalling everything and standing before the throne is Jesus. What is Jesus doing? It is saying in, my, in 1 John 2, 1, Jesus, what was doing there? He was an advocate. We have an advocate. Whose advocate? Our advocate. So Jesus is our lawyer. In heaven, in the judgment throne. First John 2 1 says, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Wow. If, the, if uh, we would go to the judgment alone, I don't think we will win. Because that's God and His law. And we have all sinned. But because Jesus Christ is our advocate, we have hope. Because Jesus Christ, I will tell you later, tonight, the court was seated. Okay. And the books 
were opened. Oh, imagine everything that we have ever done is written in the books. If we have not repented, it's not yet erased. So those books are records of deeds of us who we are standing in trial. Ecclesiastes 11.9 says, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer in your days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all this, whatever you do in this life, God will bring you into judgment. Okay. Everything we can do, but everything has a judgment, according to Ecclesiastes. In the next chapter, it says, Ecclesiastes 12.14, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Let me immediately tell you, my friends, that if you repented of the secret sins, then you will be forgiven. That is our only hope. But if we don't repent, that will be in the judgment against us. Furthermore, Matthew 12 36 and 37. Every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. What does idle words mean? Words that are not about heavenly things. Words, I don't know, gossip or lies or just fun or that, nothing ha that has nothing to do with eternal life. For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. So let us be careful what we are talking about. Malachi also describes the records, the books, in Malachi 3.16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. Oh, the Lord is listening. So a book of remembrance was written before him. So everything that we are doing, everything that we are saying, are written in the databases of heaven to be used in the judgment so that we will understand our what is happening. For those who fear the Lord and for and who meditate on his name. So why is everything being written down? So that we will understand the judgment. If God says you will live or you will die and then people have question, how come? Then we have something to read. And we will see if we did not repent or if we repented. So God notices everything that uh, happens to us. He marks every word that we encourage other people or some deeds of kindness. Everything is written then, written there. All the good things and the bad things also. King David was also very confident. In God's record keeping, this is a righteous record keeping. He says in Psalms 56 8, Put my e tears in your bottle, are they not in your book? Okay, so every thought is in the books of God. God keeps very accurate records for everyone, not because He needs, He forgets what's there, what's happening, but for the benefit of the universe because Satan accused God that his government is not fair, that his character is not good, but, uh, but God wants every creature to be satisfied with his judgment. That's why there is documentation of everything so that the truth will tell that God is righteous. And everybody in the whole universe will understand because there are books that God's judgment is a righteous judgment. That God is not only a righteous judge, God, He is loving, just, and fair, and very forgiving and long suffering toward us all. But with God, there are no secrets. Everything is transparent. God knows everything. And we repent. Therefore, we have to repent of every sin that we have committed. That's how God conducts His judgment. 1 Corinthians 4 5 says, He will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness 
and reveal the counsels of the heart. Every hidden thing will be revealed. Everything we are thinking will be revealed. That is why there is no cover up in that day. My friend, if you know that we are going to be forgiven, why don't we repent now? Okay? I assure you, the Bible says that we will be forgiven. Therefore, there is no choice but to repent. We can feel our fool our friends and our families, but God, we cannot fool. So no use lying or fooling God because he even reads the secrets of the heart according to 1 Corinthians 4, 5. <clears throat> However, in Matthew 16, 27, there is something positive. It says, he will reward each according to his works. Wow! So if we are doing evil, we should fear the judgment. But if we are doing good, we should be excited about the judgment because there is a reward for all the good works that we are doing. But you know what? Uh, we are not saved by good works. Yeah, We are not saved by good works. We are saved by grace. But we are rewarded by our good works. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, because for this is man's duty for god will bring every work into judgment that is solomon's conclusion of the whole life what to do love god and fear his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for god is going to bring every work into judgment <clears throat> my friends in the judgment day when it comes there are only two positions one of the righteous, one with the wicked. Our record in heaven can condemn us if we don't repent, but Jesus Christ can give us salvation when we repent. Our obedience is not our basis of salvation. It is God's grace. No matter how much we obey, we still have sin, sinned. Therefore, everything, if we ever get to heaven, it is because of God's grace, okay? But when we do good, that means that our hearts are committed to God. So if we are not saved by our works, why do we do good works? Because we love God. Because God loves us. Imagine God loves us, forgive us, and then we will still do foolishness. Of course, we want to do good after God forgives us. <clears throat> that is the relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship is obedience. Okay, so speak, uh, James 2.12 says, So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So the law frees us from the judgment when we obey the law. Okay, that is the law of liberty and that is the standard, God's law. Which law of liberty is James uh, talking about? It is the do not commit adultery, do not kill, etc. Those are the commandments. God wrote the law of liberty, which is the Ten Commandments. And everybody will be judged with the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> the judgment not only determines whether we are in the side of Jesus Christ or we are in the side of Satan. It also makes clear that God is love, that we love him and that we keep his commandments. So it is not enough, my friend, to say that we love God. It is not enough to say that we love God. We have to obey and be faithful <clears throat> to the commandments. Live Jesus Christ's life. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So, being a Christian is not enough to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Those are the people who will enter the kingdom of heaven. 
<clears throat> remember, my friends, that this is about the great controversy between good and evil, Christ and Satan, and about God's character of love. The law is a written expression of God's love. That is why the Ten Commandments and the God's law, it is the standard of God's judgment. <clears throat> so, when is the judgment coming? That is the question. When is the world being judged now? Let's read in Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. To preach, okay, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. When it has come, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. <clears throat> and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. So the judgment doesn't, it doesn't say the judgment will come. It says the judgment has come. So when we look at the three angels' messages in the coming studies, we will look at that. But for now, it says that the judgment has come okay <clears throat> so revelation 14 14 15 then i looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the son of man having on his head a golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice who to him who sat on the cloud Thrust your sickle and reap, for the time has come, has come, again, for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So it is has come again, and the reaping is in the second coming, because Jesus Christ is coming to harvest the ripe fruits of the harvest. <clears throat> so do we know when this judgment is going to start? We can know from Daniel 8, 14. Just pay attention to this. Daniel had a difficult vision, but Gabriel, angel Gabriel, explained. For 2,300 days, where then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. 2,300 days, the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And the vision of the evenings and the morning, which I was told, is true. Therefore, <clears throat> seal up the vision for it refers to many days in the future and Daniel fainted and was sick many days he didn't understand he had a different, a difficult time understanding the vision and I was astonished by the vision but no one understood it why did, did it affect Daniel so much? Because he was overwhelmed with the vision. He didn't understand. Because you know what? He, Daniel was in captivity and in Babylon. And he thought that Jeremiah said only 70 years. But when he saw this vision, he was confused. How come it says 2,300 days? <clears throat> then the sanctuary will be cleansed. So he was really troubled. And he prayed. He prayed, O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act. Daniel 9, 19. He was praying for them. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. So, why was uh, he confused? Because <clears throat> it says in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. To finish the transgression and to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in the everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So what does that mean? Huh? 70 weeks. <clears throat> we have uh, to understand some things. In Bible prophecy, according to Ezekiel 4, 6, one day... 
is a year. I have laid on you a day for each year. So 70 weeks <clears throat> is equal to 470 times 7 days is 490 days. That is about that is exactly 490 literal years. So Daniel was told that the first 70 weeks of the 2300 days would be set aside for Daniel and his people. Okay. Now let's see. The question is when does the 2300 days start? <clears throat> Daniel 9:25 has this answer. For therefore no and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. Okay. When will it start? When the command was given to go and rebuild Jerusalem. Until the Messiah, the prince, there shall be 70 weeks and 62... Ah, sorry. There shall be 7 weeks and 62 weeks. 7 weeks and 62 weeks. <clears throat> The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. Okay, now let's look at the timeline. It says uh, <clears throat> 70 weeks and... Uh, what was that? 70 weeks and 62 weeks. So, now you will see that the 457, it was the time that... King Artaxerxes of Persia decree by the Persian king to restore and rebuild Jerusalem in 457 BC. Now you add 69 weeks <clears throat> or 483 years, it will result to 27 AD. And that's the year when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. The symbol, the meaning of this is that was the last week for the opportunity of the Jews as a nation to turn from their rebellious ways. <clears throat> After 27, when Jesus was baptized, he died and he was crucified in 31 AD, in the spring of 31 AD. After three and a half years, another three and a half years, so Jesus Christ ministered for three and a half years, and after another three and a half years, Stephen, the first martyr, was stoned to death. And therefore, the gospel was given to the Gentiles, not only to the Jews, Jewish people. <clears throat> so that was the first... Uh, 490 years of prophecy inside the 2300 years or days. But if we compute 457 BC and add 2300 years, that brings us to 1844 when the sanctuary would be cleansed. That was just about 200, uh, 150 to 200 years ago. <clears throat> So what is the relationship of the sanctuary of Daniel that will come out after 230, 2300 years? Yeah. So because, you know, my friends, there are two kinds of sanctuary. The real sanctuary in heaven and the sanctuary that is a shadow of the sanctuary here on, here on earth. In the Israelite time, when they sinned, they had to sacrifice a lamb and they will be forgiven of their sins but that only happened until Jesus Christ died on the cross because Jesus Christ was the prophetic uh, fulfillment of those lambs the lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world okay so that was Jesus Christ now when we sin we don't have to get a lamb. We just directly confess our sins to Jesus Christ, to God. And His blood will be the appropriation for our sins. We don't have to die eternally because somebody died for our sins. That is the symbol of the lamb 
Jesus is the true Lamb of God. <clears throat> in the Israelites' times, uh, in the when before they before Jesus came, there every year there was a day of atonement, and that was the cleansing of the sanctuary because all of their blood was put there in the of blood of the uh, sacrifices and it was full of blood or full of sin and every year there was a cleansing of the sanctuary or day of atonement 10 days before that they blew the trumpet <clears throat> so that everyone will repent of their sins and make their uh, make their lives right with God that was the symbol of the judgment that was going to happen later in a big way the judgment of the earth Leviticus 16:30 says that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord that is why the judge that is the reminder that the judgment is coming now in Hebrews 8 1 and 2 it makes it clear that the earthly sanctuary was a reflection of the sanctuary in heaven where Jesus Christ was the high priest in Paul says in Hebrews 8 says we have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens if you see the high priest is capital H capital P that is Jesus Christ a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which is the Lord which the Lord erected and not man so which sanctuary was to be cleansed it was the sanctuary in heaven. But Christ came as a high priest, Hebrews 9, 11, 12, and 24. With his blood, with his own blood, he entered the most holy place. So there is a sanctuary, there was a sanctuary here on earth. But when Jesus came, there was Jesus went to the real sanctuary in heaven, and in 1844 it says that Jesus entered the most holy place once and for all so if you look at the day of atonement when the high priest goes into the most holy place there is the final judgment for that year having obtained eternal redemption for christ was not entered uh, has not entered the holy places made with hands not like the sanctuary here on earth but which are copies of the true so the, the sanctuary that was made by the Israelites are copies of the real sanctuary which is in heaven, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. That's why Jesus is our high priest, because God is in the most holy place in the sanctuary in heaven. And Jesus Christ went into the most holy place in heaven, according to Hebrews 8, 9, and Daniel prophecy. So that is the true tabernacle or sanctuary in heaven. Everything that happened in the tabernacle here on earth was only a pattern of what is happening in the plan of salvation. Jesus Christ is the Lamb and Jesus Christ is the one who died. Jesus Christ is also the high priest. The best thing about it is he can forgive us from our sins and he can bring us to God and reunite us at one atonement with God. Hebrews 7.25 says, He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. If you want to come to God, we come to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He will bring us. He will bring our sins and forgive us from our sins. And unite us with God the Father again. Wow. Since he always lives to make intercession for us. So God, Jesus Christ, is praying for us, interceding for us, to God for us. Wow. He is our high priest. He is our doing intercession and he is our advocate. And he is our redeemer and lamb. Wow. You remember David and other writers? They, they saw the judgment as good news, right? It is because Jesus Christ is our Savior and Redeemer and Advocate and Friend. If we are friends with Jesus Christ, there is no problem with the judgment because Jesus Christ can defend us in the judgment. 
He says, therefore, whoever, Matthew 10, 32, 33, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. So let us not be shy to preach the good news because when we don't are not afraid to confess Jesus Christ, he will not also be shy to defend us in heaven. But whosoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Let us not be afraid of people. Let us be afraid of the judgment in heaven. You see, my friend, when we stand in the judgment, all our sins will be for, can be forgiven if we repent. And what God will see us, will see when he sees us, is Jesus Christ's righteousness. Jesus Christ's robe of righteousness. Our record of wrongdoing will be washed by Jesus Christ's blood and forgiven by his death and covered by his righteousness. Therefore, if we are Christ's, we will stand before God not in our own filthy rugs and failed decisions, but in Jesus Christ's spotless robe of righteousness. As if we never sinned. Wow! If we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, our record in heaven will only show Jesus Christ's perfect life. Don't you want to get that credit? My friend, that is very valuable uh, a proposition by Jesus Christ to us. So my friends, as we end this Bible study, judgment is something to look forward to. It is a serious matter. We have to search our hearts. We have to repent and make sure that we acknowledge and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, it is not something to fear, something to rejoice. It, the judgment is a time of joy because Jesus Christ forgive us from all our sins. And we want to invite other people also to enjoy this uh, forgiveness. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for forgiving us from all our sins, for giving us hope, Lord, for giving us opportunity to read and understand the Bible so that we can be joyful in the judgment. We can know what we are being judged for and we can know the rules in the judgment and the possibilities that are going to happen. Help us, give us wisdom and understanding spiritually, especially in our lives. Help us to obey you and submit to you, Lord. Give us wisdom to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.